Okay, so you guys have all seen my video on the four post hoist and why I chose a four post. It's time I get a two post. Um, definitely go check out why I bought a four post first. Uh, we're doing a lot of bodies on and off of vehicles and I put the GTO body on and off four or five times and it's a waste of time. Uh, I should have done this earlier, but uh, funds are tight. Uh, I've got tape boss going on. I've got uh, responsibilities that I have to pay families and mortgages and vehicles and whatever else. And I came across a good quality hoist, um, so I picked it up. It was uh, it's used. Um, can't buy anything made in the States right now because the tariffs are so high. Can't afford it. Don't want to buy anything in China because I'm walking underneath it. So I bought an Amco, two post that I can walk underneath and uh, feel good about myself. Now, I know you guys are going to hate me, but it's only a 7,000 pound hoist. And you guys are thinking, why would you do that? Get a 9 or a 12. 7,000 Canadian pounds is 7,000 Canadian pounds. <laughs> so, um, my truck weighs 7,000 pounds. I'd never put it on there. That's what this is for. Too much of a pain in the butt. Uh, the Audi weighs 3,400 pounds. No problems putting that on there. Uh, my wife's car, things like that. But mainly it's to, uh, even just for the C10, taking the cab on and off a bunch of times. Uh, taking the shell of the GTO on and off the, that, putting cars on the rotisserie, things like that. Um, when I'm able to afford a better hoist, this hoist will actually go in the uh, house garage and then turn into a stacker so that I, because I see myself having too many cars. Um, the Audi's actually in the house garage right now. My wife is parking outside and that's not good. <laughs> first thing first, we got to move this one over and then we'll put the two posts where the four post is. Now, originally when I poured the floor, um, I left two big circles here roughly, where I did not run my in-floor heating. My shop is heated with geothermal, and we run hot water through pipes in the concrete, and that's what keeps everything nice and toasty warm. It's nice and even all the way around, and it's a very comfortable heat. Now, I poured concrete thicker, and in two big circles here, where there is no in-floor heating, always thinking I was gonna put a two-post there. I put a couple trucks on a two-post and realized that that was not the right um, hoist for me at that time, so I bought this four post. This four post will be moving over to here, and now I have to drill holes in the floor here and not hit any of my water lines because I did not plan for a four post. Okay, so I put a little dolly underneath there, other wheel dollies underneath there. I got all the bolts cut off, flush with the floor. I got those legs supported. These are loose. I could grab the forklift, but I don't want to get, that's raining outside. And then I have to cancel my gym membership. We'll see if I can uh, slide this over. Well, that's done. Might as well grab the forklift and bring in the other hoist. Okay, I gotta move that light over to there. That one will work pretty good for shining down into the hood. Uh, this one I put on a cannonball track. I don't know if you can see that. See that? That's so I could slide my light and I went sideways and I don't know why that wasn't a great idea, but um, I'll change that out. We'll put the light so that it's shining on the hood here. Uh, I might have to lengthen that cord a little bit. I gotta rerun the hydro, my 220 from that corner down to the center. Because I won't be running two hoists at the same time, I'll probably put the plug on this one. Um, put 110 on each one just for like a battery charger. Probably put a Milwaukee charger on the side. Run the airlines and stuff to here so we got the controls for both. It's a little bit tight for this wheel if we're going to be working here, which kind of sucks with this post here. Um, but I can't get the angle. I won't be able to get big trucks in anymore if I angle this anymore so i can't move that hoist over anymore front and back works pretty good it's a pretty long car and i don't i'm not past this section here 
Um, I got enough space to walk through here into my little back room there. I'm going to hang these up eventually. Um, and then I imagine this is roughly where the car would be weight wise. Most of the weight is the engine and transmission. So you'd have that farther back, but that leaves space for a workbench all the way along here. And then I'll probably grab those from out of that back corner. Don't look over there. There's a lot of stuff there that's been neglected. Uh, when I poured my floor, that was not there. The mezzanine was not there. None of that was there. So I lined up this hoist with that door um, right there. I got to keep it as far that way as possible because I need my four post. I can't do without my four post, but that also needs to be coming in from that door. So I need to be able to swing a giant crew cab truck onto this hoist with without too much of a pain in the butt. Uh, when you drive off the ramps, that's not good. Keeping that in mind, I have an 18 foot door here that used to be for excavators and bulldozers and combines and whatever else. Um, and I'm not using that, not really doing agricultural equipment anymore, but look how much I'm in the middle of the door and this is what you're staring at. I can gain another um, maybe five feet. I'm gonna put the hoist right up against the door there. I'll be replacing that door. Um, and then I'm able to go out back behind my shop there. You guys haven't really seen there. We'll keep going on that on the uh, garage build series, but we'll clean this corner up. I think we can shove this uh, hoist over a little bit, and line it up with the door. So if I did want to drive a car out, I can do that or come in from that side. If for some reason this is all clogged up, which it is. Um, but this is also my second zone for my heating floor. So all the pipes in this half of the shop end up right there. So me being able to drill this post in the ground probably out of the question see the lines oh so nice look at that oh and i need to move it over only about a foot i probably did that so i'd line up with that door really well which makes it a pain for this hoist because i have to angle that hoist like crazy definitely when you're designing a shop figure out where you would want to put your hoist and pour the concrete thicker uh, when you're picking up a truck uh, if you're putting in a 12,000 pound hoist um, you're taking that four, uh, 12,000 pounds and dividing it in two. So you're putting 6,000 pounds on one post plus the weight of the, the hoist itself. So you run the risk of cracking the concrete and whatever else. Uh, we've got steel mesh in this concrete and I poured it nice and thick where the posts are so we're not worried about that. To find the exact square of the hoist, I measured off my wall. I just measured from the wall out to the post. Uh, I got 148 inches of both. And then what we want to do is chalk a line. Okay, now don't laugh, but I've had friends come over from Europe who never seen this neat little invention before, which is just string on a roll with chalk inside. So when you pull it out, when I say chalk a line, as you pull the line out, you hook it on, make a nice line, tap it a little bit, pull it nice and tight, and then snap it, and it leaves a perfect little line. And didn't know we had to make a video on that, but that's called a chalk line. That post is square. This one's on a slight, slight angle. I'll drill one hole at the back here and put a lag in there, and then we'll twist this post just slightly so that this lines up with this line there. Um, we also want to measure um, the distance between the, uh, the tops and then do the same distance at the bottom and then grab a level, preferably a four foot, my Stabila four foot died a, a while ago, but I know my two foot's pretty good. So we want to make sure that it's nice and level, uh, making sure that the bubble is close. We got to go a bit that way. So we'll hit it with a sledge and also uh, this way. So we need to bang the bottom in just a hair. Um, you want to make sure it's level. We're going to drill our holes, three quarter inch holes. To hold this down, we are using four inch sleeved anchors is what it's called. So we'll drill a three quarter inch hole. You slam this in there. What happens is these little ribs catch the end of the concrete. And as you tighten the nut, the sleeve goes over the, can the, the tapered part and then it jams it tight in the hole. We're also going to uh, blow out the holes and PL it. Doesn't, I, I didn't see anywhere where that's a thing, but I love PL. Uh, it's impossible to pull these out afterwards. They're part of the concrete. So um, basically you just got to cut them flush and they are part of it. You can't just pull these out. That's how they work. 
So the way this two post hoist works is it actually has two cylinders on either post, a hydraulic line that goes between them, and then these cables are the leveling cables. Um, basically on the ground, you kind of want to feel the same amount of tension as a starting point on the cables, and then just go up and down and tighten one or loosen the other. Try it again if it goes in a direction that you want. If it's starting to go up even, um, you're heading in the right direction. If it's getting worse, do the opposite. That's all there is to it. And then uh, we'll start drilling some holes. Here we go. So dust is good. As soon as it starts getting wet, we're in big trouble. But we're, we're confident, right? No worry. It's gonna be a good day because that was the closest one to the line. Whenever I drill the holes, or even when you're nailing like the strapping out of the roof, don't go straight down. Go on a slight angle, but then go on opposite angles on each hole. Makes it that much harder for it to ever pull out. Um, only because when you're, when you're lifting straight out, it's easy to come out. If they're on an angle, they're kind of jammed in there. So just keep that in mind. Uh, don't go too crazy. Um, even just a little bit of an angle uh, helps. Uh, just make sure that the opposite one, the other hole is gonna be the other way. Um, You'll, you'll understand. Okay, so we got our bolts in. I did not end up using a uh, uh, PL. I used a two-part epoxy. Um, try not to get any on the threads or on the nut itself. Just put a little bit in the bottom of the hole and, and put some around the bolt itself. Uh, the two-part epoxy that we got from Quick Right is actually meant for anchoring things. Um, and once the bolts are in, like I said, you'll never get them out anyway. A couple things, if you are installing your own hoist, uh, definitely know what you're doing and definitely get it inspected afterwards if you're unsure about anything or something looks sketchy um, Definitely look into it farther. Don't just assume the best uh, Case scenario because it's your safety that's happening when you're walking underneath uh, I've checked out when I was looking for my four post I was looking at a bunch of hoists and I saw quite a few rotten ones actually ones that were used in wash bays had a lot of salt exposed to them uh, they rot away just like our cars do. So if you're down south, don't worry about that. When you're looking at a hoist, uh, the airlocks on mine are disconnected, so I still have to hook those up. I have to flip the safeties over manually. Um, so I'll run to Princess Auto for that. Uh, the cables that are connected between the two, all they do on this hoist is level it. But on my four post, the, the cables run in between the whole frame, and there's one cylinder that lifts. So the entire car is being lifted on the cable. So uh, you can get replacement cables, certified ones that are made properly. Do not make your own cables, um, whether it's for that or that. Remember, these, as, as much as those warnings are, it's not that daunting of a job. So remember, if you're, if you're not filthy, you'll never be rich. So um, stay filthy and uh, do it safely at the same time. Here we go.